So before we get into any of the design work on your site, we're going to um, create the header and the footer. So the header, when I'm in Site Builder here, if I go in full screen, this is the header at the top, and this will look slightly different depending on which theme you're using. And the footer is at the bottom. Now, really important to remember that the header and the footer are site wide. So if you change the header or the footer on any page, it's going to change it across your whole site. It's not page specific. So let's go back into desktop view here. You can access the header and the footer on every page. So click on home page and you'll see at the top, there's the header and the footer. Now, if you go back and go into courses and click on your course sales page, you're going to see the same thing, header and footer. So again, these are site wide. If you make a change on this page, it's going to show the same change on your home page and on every other sales page. So header footer are site wide. All of the sections in between are page specific. So let's go back to your home page and click into header. First thing you're going to do is upload your logo and that's going to go up here in the header section. Click on logo, click on upload image, click on select files and click on your logo and upload. Okay. The thing to keep in mind about logos is you generally really want them in PNG file type, which allows for a transparent background. That way I could make this header, the background of the header, any color I want. And it's not going to be a big block of white logo here. That's what you want to stay away from. So ideally you want a PNG background, transparent, a PNG file type, transparent background for this logo. The other thing you don't want is a whole bunch of white space above and below the logo. So if you have a tiny little logo in the middle here and a whole bunch of white space above and below, go into a graphics program like PicMonkey and crop it so that it's really just the logo taking up this space. Now, something I get asked by every client is, can you please make my logo bigger? And unfortunately I have to say to everyone is that no one cares about your logo. None of your visitors care about your logo. Your students don't care about your logo. You are the only one who cares about your logo. The goal of this page is not to get someone to stare at your logo. The goal of any page is to get your visitors to do something. So we don't want the logo big and right in front of our face. Yes, it's a branding experience. We do want them to see it, but it does not need to be large. In fact, it's better if it's not because it will keep the header smaller and will keep people focused on what we want them to focus on. So don't go ahead and make this, you know, big because you want your logo to be huge. Click on save. Let me look at full screen here. See, if we do this, then almost a third of the page is taken up by our logo, which means all of our prime real estate is not going to be showing. We want our prime real estate, which is this section, to show and be prominent, not this section here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to make my logo much smaller because again, it's not about me and my logo. It's about my visitors. All right, so then we're going to scroll down here and generally the link, that means when someone clicks on this logo, this is asking them where, this is asking you where you want them to go when they click on that logo. And normally you would take them to your homepage. So you would link to another page and the page is going to be your homepage and save. All right, next we're going to go down to style and alignment. There's two different kinds of um, headers that we can have in Thinkific. One is transparent and one is solid. This is an example of a solid header. So if we look at this, we've got transparent or solid. This is an example of a site with a solid background color. This is an example of a transparent header. So the image comes all the way up to the top and the header kind of fades into the background, which is exactly really what we want. So this is transparent. So the image would go right up to the top of the page. And this is solid where you have a solid color background in the back. And again, this is site wide. So you need to decide if this is going to be transparent or solid for the whole site. 
And that really has more to do with your design and what you want it to look like than anything else. So I'm going to leave mine on transparent. Sticky navigation is something you never want to have. This particular site has sticky navigation, meaning when someone starts scrolling, the header stays there. We don't want the header to stay there because again, we don't want this being so prominent. We want people to stay on the sales page. So let's go down to one of their sales pages here. So as you can see, this is the, this is the part that we want people to stay focused on. But what happens when I start scrolling is I end up focusing on this. So now I go over to view other training. Now I go over here to their about page. I'm not focused on this information. If we leave sticky unchecked, this is what we want. When people scroll, we want that header to scroll with them. So we don't want them staying focused on that header. So I would n never suggest that you have sticky navigation on your site. I would always suggest that you uncheck this. Show my dashboard link. We want this checked so that when someone's logged in, they have a link at the top that says my dashboard. And you want to show the menu label on mobile navigation. So these are good here. As far as alignment goes, alignment are um, your links over here where they're going to show up. So if I left align them, watch what happens to my header, right? These ones move over. Sign in will always stay on the right hand side. So I like them all together. So I'm going to leave those on right and click on save. Now we're going to go down to the button product pages only. Here's an example of a site that actually has this button showing. They have a buy button on the top right. This is a terrible experience for your visitors. I would never suggest having this buy button here on the top right. First of all, no one likes to buy anything, so it's not an attractive thing to click on, button to click on. But also, you want them staying, again, focused on what's in here. And when they get to the call to action in here, that's when you want them to click on it. They're not just going to willy nilly click on a buy button on a page. So that's a terrible experience for a buyer, potential buyer. So I would, I would always suggest hiding that button. You don't have to have text in here, obviously, because the button's hidden. You can, it doesn't matter because there is no button that's going to appear on the top right of, of the pages that says buy or get it now or something like that. So I would always suggest hiding that button. So checking that check mark there and click on save. That way we're saving as we go along. The next section here is the links and what the links mean are this link and this link. You don't have to have anything here. If you just want a sign in button, you can do that. The less distractions for people, the better. Now, if you have more than one course, you probably want an all courses link here. So as you can see, I've got a link, all courses, right? And this leads to my all courses sales page. So all courses, choose another page, and then the page is all courses. So when someone clicks on that, it's gonna take them to all of my courses together. As far as whether it opens a new window or the same window, if it's leading off your Thinkific site, let's say you have an official website and you want to link them over to your website, I would have that always open in a new window. If they're staying on your Thinkific site, I think it's perfectly acceptable to keep that in the same window, right? So if I'm keeping them on my site, I'm going to keep them in the same window. If I'm taking off my site, I'm going to, I'm going to move them over to a new window. And I would not suggest necessarily having your blog in here. Again, this is just a test site that some of my uh, team members play around with. So they'll put in different things in here. So I would not suggest necessarily having anything else except all courses. Now, if you have a website with an about page, I would probably link to that. It's the second most visited page on any website. So I would add a link. I would call that about or about us. The link destination is going to be a custom. Let me just pull this down a little bit. Here's a little trick with Thinkific. I often have to zoom in to see this custom URL. So custom URL, and then the URL I want is my about page, right? Whatever that about page is. So I'm just gonna take this link here and put it in here. And I would put this in a new window because I'm taking them off my Thinkific site. Again, this 
this is a distraction. So if you can keep them focused on your pages, that's your goal here, not to take them off on all kinds of tangents. Okay, and then click save. All right, once you've done the header here, and don't worry about the colors and so on, we're gonna fix all of that. Hit the back button and go down to footer. So in the footer, you can add up to three social links. So if we go under social links, this has to be lowercase. See, if you try and search with uppercase, it won't work. So it has to be lowercase. Choose your Facebook icon. Let's say you're leading them over to your Facebook page. Then you would put in the link for your Facebook page right here. Again, you can use YouTube. I think we have Instagram. There's Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, right? So these are your different social sites that you might have uh, listed down here or shown down here. Under copyright, think if it will grab the copyright and it will say copyright and this this will say the name of your site but you don't want that um i mean you might want that but generally it's going to be copyright name of your business so it should say not copyright it should say name of your business 2021 line all rights reserved is really what your copyright should say and then you want to make sure this is checked that says show copyright down here, you're going to put your links to your privacy policy and your terms of use. So privacy policy, we'll come, we'll come, we'll grab that URL in a minute. And then we're going to add another link. And this link is going to be terms of use. And again, we're going to select a custom URL. Okay, and these ones, we are actually gonna open these in a new window. And there is a very good reason for that, which I will share with you. So let's save that for now. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do to get these links. Up here on your tab, you're gonna right click, duplicate. So that's gonna basically bring up the exact same page that you're on in your Thinkific site. But on this tab, we're gonna X out of here. We're gonna go down to settings. We're gonna to go to orders and accounts. And we're gonna scroll down here to get your privacy policy URL. Now, let's just double check this. In the third tab, paste that in and press enter. Just double check to make sure that goes to your privacy policy. Now, copy this. If you copy this straight into that, this link here, it's not going to work because there's no HTTP or anything. So we take this, right? We put it in a new tab, we press enter, and then we take this. This is the actual URL here. So copy that, go back to Site Builder into the footer, Click into your privacy policy, take that out and put that in and then save. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go back to orders and accounts. We're going to go down terms, copy, go back to your third tab, pop that in, press enter. This is my terms of use page. Copy that, go back here. Go down to this link, select destination. Let's just, let me pull this down here. Custom URL, put in your, your URL a new window. Both of these should be on new window. Click on save. Okay, we can close those link blocks back up then. And we are done the footer. So now to test these links, which you should do right now, you're gonna take your Thinkific URL, you're gonna to go to an incognito window and pop that in. Okay, let me just move that up here. So we're gonna test this first. We're gonna click on all courses. And we can see this goes to our all courses page. If you click up here, it should say your URL forward slash collections. I'm going to click on about. I want to make sure, see how that opened in a new uh, new tab. 
and that takes me over to the right page. So you're checking these links here and the sign in link is going to take you over to your sign in. Again, don't worry about colors and design right now. We just really need the, the structure here. Okay. And then once you're here, click on this and make sure you go back to the home page of your Thinkific site, which you do in this case. All right, now let's scroll. Actually, let me pull this down. We'll scroll down here and we're going to click on privacy policy. Let's pull this up. So let's click on privacy policy. And you can see it opened in a new tab here, my privacy policy, which is exactly what we want. Okay, let's scroll down to terms of use and again opens in a new tab. And this is why you want them to open in a new tab because they're in the footer of your site. So if someone's on your sales page and they click on one of these, you don't want them to leave your sales page, right? We don't want them to leave our sales page. So privacy policy in terms of use need to open in a new, uh, new tabs or new window. Okay, and then also double check this and double check this to make sure it goes to your sites. And once you're done that, you are ready to move on.